What is going on, fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf, and we are going to continue on with our 2D tower defense tutorial. And in this one, we're going to be adding in a turret that will turn to shoot our enemy. Going to want to do is actually import the artwork for our turret. Yes, we're not going to use a basic um, sprite. We're going to drop in our artwork here. I'm going to create a new folder called Sprites. And we're going to drop our turrets in here. There's a sprite sheet or multiple sprite image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and turn the pixels per unit to 32. Change it to multiple and then hit apply. Now once we've done that we're going to go over to filter mode. Go to point none and compression none here. Um, you can use any uh, turret sprite you want. If you want to use this one, then let me know and I'll put I'll pull it somewhere for people to access, probably in my Discord server, but uh, we will see. Uh, but let's click on Sprite Editor and you can see the two different sprites here. Now, this is the base of the turret and this is the actual turret itself that will rotate round to face the enemy. So what we want to do is go to Slice. Um, we're going to go grid by cell and we're going to make this 32 by 32. And now we're just going to hit slice and this will create us two perfectly sized um, elements. So let's just hit apply, go back into our scene and now we drop this down, we have turret one and turret two. So let's create a new empty object in our scene and call this the turret. Uh, let's just reset its transform for now and let's drag in the base sprite here. So drag it in, make sure it's at zero. And if we just zoom in a little bit, you can actually see the turret there. So if we move this over, you can see it will sit over here, but you can currently see it's currently sitting behind the white box. So we want to pull it on a new sorting layer. So go to your sorting layers, add a new one and call this the foreground or the, um, I normally call this something along the lines of maybe, tur well, you could probably just say turrets and the turrets will be in front of um, the default layer, which obviously our turrets will sit on. So let's put it on turrets. And there you go, you can see that's now in front. You can also see it no longer is lit up. Now that's because our global light 2D is only focusing on the uh, default layer. Now we can select this or just click all, and this will now target all layers so everything will be lit up. Uh, we also need to reset this transform because I currently moved that, and we should move this over one if we want to see it there. So you can see this is what it'll look like once it's placed there. But we also want the top of the turret as well. So we can drag that in too. Set its position to zero as well. And this, we also want to put it in turrets. But we want to set this to one. Because this one should be higher than the base. And there you go. Now, what we can do is we should be able to rotate this around the set axis and see it moving there. I'm just going to rename this to turret and this to base. Or I'm going to rename this to gun. And this to base now this is great but if you look ever so carefully you'll see when you rotate this around the center it's not actually perfectly center it's actually slightly off center and that's fine but we can fix that by going to our turret and creating an empty object called rotation point or rotate point and in here, we can drag our gun into our rotate point. Now, the rotate point is going to be dead center of our object. So we should be able to now rotate round and it will actually rotate around the middle of it, which is much nicer. So with that done, these are going to be our little turrets here. But our turret needs... It, need, it, needs, it's a, it needs some way to rotate and face the enemies. It needs to know a lot of different details. So we are going to create a base turret script... And we're just going to create and add a turret script and let this compile. Then we can double click this to open it up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, now in our script, we're going to need a few variables. So let's set up the... Um Let's set up a header, which we're going to call attribute, like we've done in the other videos or the other scripts. And in here, we want a serialized field of a private... Uh, a private, we probably want a... So we're going to need a flow, which is going to be our targeting range. And we're going to default this to something like 10F. This might be way too big to start with. Actually, it probably is. We're going to set it to 5F, and that will allow us to actually um, see, or actually, this will be the distance we'll be able to target our enemies. 
We also want to create another header, which we're going to call references. And this time we're going to create a serialized private transform, which we're going to call the uh, turret rotate rotation point now this is what we're going to rotate to rotate it around the um to, to this is going to be the object we created to rotate around our gun the rotate point so now in here let's drag our rotate point into our turret rotation point let's go back to script to actually do something with it so I just want to visualize how far we're going to be rate or targeting here so to do that we're going to create an on gizmo or on draw gizmo selected this will show this will show gizmos when we select the item so inside on draw gizmos we actually well actually before we do that we want to go to using and we want to say use using unity editor because we want to get reference to the handles now handles allow us to draw a 2d circle now let me just show you this so we're going to create our handles uh, dot color and we're just going to sell it to a color dot let's say something maybe let's try cyan it might be too blue and we might want to change it but we'll we'll try that we'll say handles dot draw wire disc and now we want to pass in the position we want to draw it so this is just going to be our transform dot position the effect to normal means which in which way do we want this to face and we can just say transform dot forward which is just going to be towards the camera and then what we want to do is give in our targeting range here now this is only to view it this isn't actually what we'll see in game but this will only show us in the editor so let this run and you can already see this here although it's the wrong color there we go cyan so you can see now we have this targeting range which i think is too big i think this should be a lot smaller um let's basically move this down so you can see as we move this you will see the difference so let's go for something like three i feel like this targeting range is good once it gets into this area it will then be struck down so if we place this here when enemies come into this section we will then be targeted them straight away so back in our code let's now go into a or let's actually create a private um transform called our target which by default will be null because we won't have a target. So inside of our update method, we want to actually get our target. So we're going to just say if we our target or our target is equal to null, then we need to find a target. So we'll create a find target script, which we can go down here and just say find create a private void find target. And then inside of here, we're going to want to shoot out our casts. So in here, we're going to create a physics or sorry, a ray cast hit 2D array of hits. And we are just going to say this is equal to a physics 2D dot circle cast all. And now we need a few different elements in here. The first one is our origin, which is going to be our transform dot position. We then need the distance or the range. So we're going to pass in the targeting range. We will then need the direction, which is actually just our position again, but in a factor two. So to do that, we can just say, actually, we can even just cast our position to a factor two and just pass transform dot position then our float uh, a distance is how far away from it we're target so we just want this at zero f because we want to be our target from the sh from straight apart of us and then we need a layer mask now this is important because it will stop it from picking up the actual tiles as targets so up here under references we want to serialize a private layer mask and we are going to call this the enemy mask now we can pass this back in here and there you go that's going to get us all the hits we need so we are just going to check and say if hits dot length is greater than zero that means we've we've hit something which is a good start we just want to actually set our target equal to hit zero dot transform now this is going to get us a transform of the first enemy we hit which has an enemy mask which will be our target, which will mean we can actually rotate our player towards the target. So now we're going to say else, or actually we can just 
go in here and just say return and then we can just write our code underneath so if we don't have a target we're just going to find a target and return if not if this does not come back with our target then once we've got a target we actually want to rotate towards our target so we're going to create another function called rotate towards target and underneath our find target we're going to say private void rotate towards target what we want to do is get a float called angle which is going to be equal to mathf.atan and we're actually going to get our um, target.position.y and we're going to minus our transform.position.y and this should actually be in a tan2 because we also want to get our target um we want to do the same thing but for our x position so we're going to minus the transform.position.x from our target's position um, and then we want to times this by mathf dot rad to degrees which can convert this from radians to degrees now we want to get a quaternion which is to do with all sorts of rotation but we're going to set the target rotation equal to a quaternion dot eula which gets us the x y and c essentially and we want to set this to a oh not a members thing we want to set this to a new vector free which is going to have a zero zero and then our new angle which we've just calculated we then want to set our transform dot rotation equal to our target rotation now we're going to smooth the rotation out later but i just want to show you what this happen what happens when it's like this so let's go back to our game here and we need to do a couple of things before we can actually would this will actually work the first thing we want to do is go to our enemy and we need to create a new enemy layer so let's just create enemy on our layers and then go back to our enemy and give it the enemy layer next up let's go back to our turret and actually select the enemy layer in here so we just want to make sure the only thing selected is enemy because that's the only thing we want it to target and i have just realized i am doing one thing wrong here i'm trying to rotate um the whole current transform but what we want to rotate is our turret rotation point so we want to get the turret rotation point dot rotation target rotation this should then only change the turret rotation point so if we go back here this should now work as intended and as you can see it is it's working it's aiming at an enemy but the problem is it's always it's it's kind of the wrong way and that's because we need to minus either 90 probably 90 degrees to this so let's come back here and let's just go to our angle here and we can just do plus 90f and we might need to change this to negative 90f but we'll find out in a second okay here we go and now it's actually backwards so it definitely needs to be negative 90f you're also going to notice that he's still following the first enemy even though he has gone out of range and we're going to fix that in a moment so let's swap this to be negative 90 that should fix our issue but the next issue is we're always going to have a target so what we want to do is we want to check if our target is our range so under here we will want to say we want to create a check target is in range and this function will just check tell us if our target is in range if not it will remove it from our thing so let's just say private void check target is in range and to do this all we want to do is say if our we can actually turn this into a boolean and we can just return a vector to dot distance and we can check from the enemy so the target dot position and our transform dot position if it is great or if it's less than or equal to our targeting range if this is more than our targeting range that means they are no longer in distance and we can put this in an if statement which says if target is in range then we can do something but we're going to che check if they're not in range if it's not in range then we're going to set target equal to null and then this will set it up so when it comes back round, we should then start finding another target so let's hit play and see if everything is now working so you can see it's targeting this one as soon as he goes out of range he snaps to the next target within range which is what we want now there's one last thing i want to do and that's to stop him from snapping so 
so viciously. All we want to do is go to our target rotation here, just remove this, and we're going to say quaternion dot rotate towards, and we're going to get our tr or the turret rotation point dot rotation, and then we want to give it the target rotation now we need to also pass a speed in here so let's go up to the top and create a variable here called serialize field private float and we're going to call this our uh rotation speed and we're going to set something quite high maybe maybe 5f or 10f we'll see which one works and then we need to bring this back down here and pass through the speed times by time dot delta time. Now time dot delta time just allows it so if you're running a faster machine with higher FPS, it will not change the speed of the rotation. So let's just come here and restart and just see if this works. So here we go, here comes an enemy as he moves. He is very slowly turning towards the enemies, uh, which is probably not right. Let's put this up to 100, and there you go. That's working a lot better, but it's still a little slow. Let's come out here, and let's put this up to something like 200. So it looks like we're going to have to make this a lot higher than what I thought we were going to have to. Let's zoom in just so we can see it. So you can see he rotates, and then he snaps to the next one snaps back to the next one and you can see he basically rotates towards it pretty quickly and he can keep up once he's got locked on but otherwise he needs to snap back which is nice so guys now what we want to do is take this turret and drop him into our prefabs because we're in the next video we're going to want to start actually get letting this guy shoot our enemies and then after that we want to allow him to be built onto these tiles because currently we've just placed him by dropping him in um, and we can move him around if we wanted to but the thing is we want him to be once we click on one of these tiles this is spawned and not just placed there by default so in the next video we are going to allow our enemy our robe or sorry our turret to shoot our enemies that's going to be it for this video guys if you liked it don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below if you have any questions also if you want to jump in our discord community use the link in the description to get involved with everyone if you have any questions or just want to show me some of the stuff you've been making then please feel free to hop in but that's going to be it for this one i'll see you in the next one peace out